Okay. Let's get started, folks. Uh, welcome to Notary Project uh, uh, presentation. So this is part of the Notary Project maintenance track. And today we'll talk about using Notary Project to ensure authenticity and integrity in the enterprise. Uh, I am Todi Mladenov, one of the maintainers of Notary Project, and I have Tiark here. Yeah, hi, my name is Tiark Gashev. I work for Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation, where we're currently in the process of rolling out uh, integrity with Notary Project at a pretty large scale. And uh, uh, today what we'll talk about is uh, why integrity and authenticity matters. Uh, then we will actually show you how you can get there, and Tiark will go through a a uh, bunch of steps like uh, what they are doing in their enterprise and at the end we'll finish with uh, some updates from Notary Project and what's coming up. So uh, starting with why integrity and authenticity matters. Uh, we implement uh, zero trust everywhere else. So we implement zero trust uh, uh, for our applications. We implement zero trust for our users. So we don't trust them all the time. We ask them to go and re-authenticate every time when they need to do some uh, new action. We do the same also for our networks, but we rarely actually implement zero trust for our applications. So we go and pick up container image from Docker Hub, we don't check who published it. Most of the time, we don't have a way to check who published it. And we just actually start using it, whether it's in our build or whether it's in our um, deployment, and it goes directly to our production clusters. The way we look at uh, uh, kind of the supply chain for uh, containers or any other software artifact is you go through a bunch of stages. So first, you acquire an image uh, from, as I said, Docker Hub or GCR or GHCR and so on. Uh, after that, you actually build an internal catalog of trusted images. Then you use it for build and then deploy it and then run it at the end. Between each one of those stages, we are looking to actually implement authentication and check for integrity of uh, any software artifact that we are getting. And not only the software artifacts, but also any additional supply chain artifacts like S-bombs, like uh, vulnerability reports or attestations. So I will hand it over to Tiark uh, just to go through uh, their experience and uh, get some learning uh, from their implementation. So go ahead, Tiark. Okay, cool. Now, we've learned we should probably be concerned with uh, integrity in our supply chains. And let's first look at a, like the dream scenario, the, what we would have in an ideal world. So ideally, a developer would push their containers. Ideally, they already would have signed their commits, ideally with a hardware token or something. And then in the pipeline, when it's, after it's built, it should be signed, right? Um, and the important thing, step by step, you push, uh, you deploy it, for example, to your Kubernetes cluster, and you can actually verify that the artifact is, uh, has its integrity. And you can do that with all the common uh, tools we have in Kubernetes available. But the important thing is in the ideal world, everything, every single step is done with integrity in, in mind. But let's face it, we're not living in an ideal world, especially not if you work at very large enterprises, because the reality in enterprise infrastructure is that most of the time we like have very grown infrastructure, right? We very, we basically never have the chance to rebuild everything on, on the green field. And often we already have existing infrastructure. Most enterprises already have existing PKI. They have already an infrastructure to manage their secrets. Most enterprises, uh, at least at a, a certain scale, actually have several solutions for all of these problems uh, deployed to production depending on teams. And also a very common problem is that large enterprises tend to have like external suppliers. So there might even be infrastructure that you don't know of that is used, but you still want to be able to check for integrity there. And obviously, uh, it comes with homegrown and, and grown and heterogeneous infrastructure, you often have to support very old uh, legacy softwares and application runtimes, and you can't rebuild everything all the time. So if we want to uh, get better with the integrity of our artifacts, we need a tool to cope with these challenges, with these challenges faced 
in uh, grown uh, and legacy enterprise environments and complex environments within in huge organizations. And as this is a notary project maintainer track, notary project, especially notation CLI, which is like the main, the main tool of the notary project, is basically is a good tool for that solves what we need. Because we want to sign artifacts. In our case, we especially want to sign OCI images, Docker images. But we probably want to do that with our own certificates. Why do we do that? want to do that? First of all, we don't only want to solve the problem of uh, integrity, that we're sure that the artifact we pulled is actually the same as, as is laying in the registry. But we also want to ensure authenticity. So if a developer at Mercedes is deploying an application to their cluster, I want to make sure that that application has actually, was actually built by him or his pipeline and not somebody else. And as mentioned, <laughs> large enterprises tend to have grown and, and, and complex infrastructures. You probably need support for several different tools and stuff. Like for example, we are running on Vault. I'll go deeper into that later. But other teams at Mercedes have other like Azure Vaults or EK, uh, AWS secret storage, stuff like that. And so let's take you actually through a very practical example at our place to uh, hammer down a bit the, the things I mean by this. So I'm in a team at Mercedes-Benz where we run the main Kubernetes platform for Mercedes. Almost all cloud workloads that are contained in native run on our clusters. We run round about 900 clusters sometimes a few more, sometimes a bit less. And at the moment, they're fully self-managed. We run them across several regions, and we've built the stack ourselves since already 2015. So we've been really early adopters. And so our setup looks uh, basically like this. It's a very, very simplified representation of our setup. So we have, cluster, we have several regions, nine in total. And every region has like 30 to 200 clusters. It depends on. On, on the size of the region. And we use cluster APIs, so we have a management cluster in every region that actually, where we can manage the clusters via CRDs and that um, provisions all the infrastructure and the, the actually workload clusters that we can provide for development teams. Um, but for this talk, the more important thing is uh, we have, for example, an existing vault in every region. We use that for several use cases. Uh, we, we, just, we use it to distribute secrets, stuff like that. But, uh, and we also have actually <laughs> multiple build tools in use because as reality is, you're always migrating, right? We're getting better, but currently we're building our basically own Kubernetes distribution, you could call it, via the Upstream Tools Pro. But we also still have an old Jenkins that is doing a lot of testing jobs and a lot of our development teams, because we, we're not there yet, are already running on GitHub Actions, which is supposed to be the... Uh, the platform where everybody at Mercedes is building on. We will be also very soon, but we're not fully transformed yet. But the important thing to take away from this is uh, infrastructures, when they're grown and if they're in the reality of production, get complex and you have like heterogeneous stuff like that. We don't have the, we obviously don't have the best practice for everything because we have to run production, right? Uh, we're working on it and that's how things go. So how do we actually get to at least a bit of integrity in the stack. I mean, we already have this vault, right? So we have quite nice secrets management and stuff. Uh, what does the vault do in our infrastructure? It acts, uh, vault has a feature that can, like a cool integration to act as a CA and uh, generate certificates and stuff and sign them. So we have a certificate authority, one per region, which we use uh, for all sorts of authentication stuff. Uh, we also have a certifi certificate authority for every cl cluster already running in that vault. Why do we have that? It's actually used by us, admins, who have full access to the clusters to authenticate against the uh, um, Kubernetes API server. Yeah, so, and it's obviously also used as a secret store. So how do we use this existing infrastructure, right? We don't want to build everything new. We want to get this up and running before we're done building the perfect platform for everyone. Uh, it's actually quite simple <laughs> with Notation. So because Notation has a very, very pluggable uh, architecture, and it has a plugin for HashiCorp Vault. It also has a plugin for like Azure Key Vault and, and all the other vaults there are. 
and you can actually really, really easily write your own. So for us, the step to actually sign, the first step to actually just sign our own images that we use to run a platform is basically already all you can see on that slide. It's calling a CLI. Obviously, the ID should be the ID of the real key, not, not my example. And, uh, and adding the, the image we want to sign. And you can see plugin HashiCorp Vault. The rest is handled by the plugin. Um, I was actually surprised by, that, by this as it's quite simple and it fits perfectly in our setup, but it would fit perfectly into a lot of setups because you can just pick and choose your plugins. You're not bound to any, any specific infrastructure. Now, the interesting part comes actually a bit later because if we take a bit of a closer look how our bootstrapping of clusters work, we do use Cluster API, vanilla Cluster API, to provision on AWS and on, uh, in on-premises OpenStack, but we actually have our own controller. We call it Cluster API Extension Controller that is used to install and deploy all kinds of things to our clusters. We have several add-ons for our developers. We have stuff like manage observability solutions that we deploy. All sorts of stuff is deployed by that. Um, but the cool thing is we already have a concept of jobs running within the management cluster in every region that distributes the certificates that we use to authenticate against the API server for us. That's something we already have. So we already have jobs that run before a cluster is initialized or upgraded or changed in general, which talk to the vault, get certificates, and distribute them to our nodes. But they're distributed to the nodes themselves. The API server doesn't even know of them right now. But as we already have this, it's very trivial for us to add certificates, for example, for signing images, which is what we did, right? It, it just fits in. And so in our case, we can just add notation CLI to every node. And another very specific to us use case is we're actually running custom uh, authorizers in our clusters. So we control the whole authorization workflow within Kubernetes. So that's why we already have a uh, setup with our own little authorization controller and open policy agent running on our, on our nodes. And we, could, we were just able to write a few additional lines of code and use the notation binary to uh, validate our images in that. So the key takeaway of this is we have a very, very custom setup that is, that is far from uh, the standard way to do it. We're not running a managed Kubernetes. We're doing our own, our own authorization. We have our own setup with Vault for, for uh, distributing certificates and stuff. But we're still able to very quickly roll this out. And it's also very important to point out there is a standard way and an open source way of doing this, which is uh, just building the same technology. Like if you, if you don't have this, a lot of these custom setups. If you don't have existing PKI yet, you can just roll, uh, for example, there's a tool called Ratify, which is basically a, uh, integrates very well with, with admission controllers like Kiverno and, and uh, Gatekeeper. And you can just use that and go the fully Kubernetes native way. You don't need to have to do this custom stuff. But the important thing for us, you can. And so we were able to very quickly integrate it. And we will be able to uh, iterate over it and improve and move to a more standardized solutions in the future. Those, this is where we're already um, at my next slide. So what would be a way forward? How could we improve this? So our current status is currently being rolled out. Is we're now <laughs> fully, uh, we have fully guaranteed in integrity for all of our own platform components. So everything that you typically know uh, that runs in, in kubesystem and Kubernetes, or we have our own little system namespace where our, our components run, uh, everything in that is, is being fully um, signed in our pipelines, and it's being validated by our custom author, an authorizer and admission hooks that run on the node. But that's obviously, no, we're not there yet, right? That's not perfect, but important thing, because you can always say, well, that's not full integrity, right? We're not, we're not validating that our pipelines are actually the pipelines we think, we think they are. We're not validating that the workloads our developers uh, publish are the workloads they pretend to be, right? But the important thing is every bit of integrity is better than no integrity. And actually, we already, uh, the, the attack surface by introducing this has already gotten way smaller. Because obviously, when you're trying attacking us by like typical man in the middle attacks or something where integrity can protect you from, um, our components would be by far the most attractive target 
because if you would be able to, to take over the supply chain of us, the platform team, you could take over all, all thousand uh, clusters of our development teams, right? If you attack the supply chain of the application teams, you can only take over the application, which is bad enough. But that, that's an important step, because a bit of integrity is still helpful. It, it helps to, to um, shrink the attack surface, even if it's not perfect yet. So what are we planning on doing? Obvi the obvious next step is doing the same thing, but for our application teams. And so what we're planning on doing is we have a centralized build platform for all of Mercedes-Benz. It's, it's built on top of GitHub Actions, and we have our own team running the action runners. And what we're currently implementing is using the PKI I described earlier, the vaults, uh, to have a, a template, a pipeline template for every development team that they can just use. They can build their Docker images. They can additionally use a next step for GitHub Action that signs them and are automatically uses the correct certificate because we know their, their ID and stuff. So that's very important for us because we, can't, we don't want to add this mental load to, to, the, um, to the task a development team has to do. And in the, in the far future, we're also planning, but we're, we're not there at all yet, to do like all the fancy and cool stuff. What we really want to do is sign our SBOMs and, and validate them and sign our, uh, uh, um, our CV scan results and stuff like that as well, which obviously is important as well, because if you want to do anything with your SBOMs and do some detections on them and you're not sure it's actually the right one, all the detection, all the security mechanisms based on the SBOMs and stuff won't work. Um, and so we're planning on doing that, but we can't do that before we don't have in, uh, <laughs> implemented uh, integrity for all of our development teams, which will take time. It's a very big organization. There's several thousand developers that we're supporting with our clusters. But again, the important step is we did a step, and we have already improved a lot in this case. So let's look at the uh, learnings we had with uh, implementing notation and using notary project for integrity. Um, it, Existing PKI can be used, um, and especially it integrates well basically everywhere. Notation itself uses a very, very pluggable architecture. You can build everything you need yourself, or you can use the open source stack. So it's very pluggable, which is very important for us and other large enterprises that have these kinds of infrastructures. For us, especially when we're speaking about moving forward and adding integrity to our development teams and maybe even other platforms. Yeah, pluggable. So yeah, um, I'm gonna hand over to Toddy now, who's one of the maintainers and was of great help in implementing all of this to Thank give you. you updates on where Notary is headed. Thank you, Tiark. And uh, uh, I hope this kind of uh, uh, presentation from Tiark gave you one overview of our, uh, how we actually approach uh, Notary project and the tools that we develop there. Uh, our intention is to provide such a smooth migration from existing infrastructure to something more modern. And we've seen everything that uh, Tiark explained, we've seen with uh, uh, many other uh, companies that are actually trying to start signing images. And uh, they are struggling with, uh, for example, if we need to build a completely new infrastructure for signing, can we use something existing? So uh, I believe last time on last KubeCon, we were also showing how you can do that uh, uh, with, let's say, Venify. So Venify. Uh, a lot of enterprises have Venify infrastructure, and uh, they can actually migrate very easily to the new signing. But uh, let's take a look at uh, what's coming up uh, with uh, uh, Notary Project, and actually what was delivered in the last six months since the last uh, KubeCon. Uh, we had a couple of releases in, uh, since the last KubeCon. So uh, we have a uh, um, new version, uh, version 1.2.0, uh, that supports uh, OCI 1.1. OCI is the Open Container Initiative uh, uh, specification for uh, registries. We also support timestamping, uh, which means that uh, you can also timestamp your signatures and uh, when you validate it, uh, you can validate them for longer time than, for example, the certificate uh, that is used to, the, to sign them. Uh, we have update to the uh, GitHub Action also uh, with the uh, new version of the uh, CLI. And uh, we are working on 1.3 release. Uh, uh, we were uh, kind of, uh, we had RC1 in October, and we are targeting to actually release it in the next uh, uh, couple of weeks or a month. 
Uh, what 1.3 will support will support uh, revocation with uh, um, CRLs. Uh, revocation for us is important because, like, once you sign something, you need to go and figure uh, out a way to say, yeah, I signed it. By the time I actually signed it, I think uh, it was valid, but later on I discovered it is not. So, how do we validate this signature? So, CRLs are one of the functionality that we'll provide for, for this. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, bug fixes in 1.1 uh, releases that were released in October. Right now, uh, we already actually completed the security audit uh, covering the uh, latest uh, uh, version of notation. Uh, actually, that will come as part of 1.3. The security audit will be for 1.3. Uh, there were no high or severe issues found. Uh, there was only one medium issue and a couple of low uh, severity issues that were found that uh, we will publish the report uh, very soon. Uh, we are working on the medium uh, issue, and I believe in December we'll publish the report and also we'll go with the release. Uh, in the ecosystem, what happened in the last uh, six months is so uh, we partnered with uh, Bitnami. So Bitnami is using uh, notation and notary project signature to sound, uh, sign their Helm charts uh, and uh, uh, also uh, their container images. Uh, Flux also support notary project signature verification. So if you use Flux for uh, deployments. And also Alibaba, they developed their own plugin, as uh, uh, Tiark was explaining. So now we have also a plugin for the Alibaba uh, Cloud uh, uh, Key Management System, which is the Cloud Secret Manager plugin. Well, uh, our roadmap and what is coming on, uh, up in the future, uh, one thing that we've been working and discussing in the uh, Notary Project community is really the ability to sign arbitrary artifacts, not only container images or OCI compliant uh, artifacts. So uh, this is one of the things that actually it was in the work. We couldn't fit it in 1.3 version, but uh, uh, we'll have it uh, uh, hopefully in March. And uh, also, we will switch completely to support OCI.1.1 uh, referrers as default and have a backup on the uh, support for OCI 1.0. Uh, if you're familiar with, so the difference is that uh, the newer specification for OCI has a much more elegant way, for example, to attach artifacts to container images. For example, if you have a container image and SBOM, uh, you can very easily refer those in the registry and they go together. The same with the signatures. For the previous one, you need to do kind of some magic with the tags and the indexes. So we will switch to support by default OCI 1.1 and have a backup on the 1.0. And then we are targeting notation 2.1.0 in uh, June. and. Uh, our biggest kind of uh, work in that uh, uh, release will be support for uh, attestations. So we are already uh, looking at uh, in total attestations, and uh, this is what we are actually uh, trying to offer, as well as offer registry-wide trust policy. So when you configure a trust policy, it can be I trust completely this registry, or I just trust, uh, for example, a certain repository in that particular registry. So that's all that comes uh, uh, with uh, Notary Project. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, this is a link for uh, feedback for the session, and we'll open it for questions. Yeah. Would you mind, or actually, I can come. Do you know if there's going to be support from Argo? Uh, in the sense of uh, as part of the deployment, Argo deployment. Uh, yeah, one of the, uh, we don't have a concrete uh, uh, timeline for that, but uh, we are looking at this. So I know that uh, uh, a sister project of Notary Project, which is Oras, is already implemented in Argo. Uh, we use the Oras libraries for, um, for example, uh, attaching the signatures and so on. So uh, we are engaging with that community, but not specific timelines for that. Any other questions?
I apologize, I'm not very uh, familiar with your technology, but does your architecture support um, air gapped environments? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. So we do support air gap environments, and that is one of the uh, kind of uh, uh, things that we were thinking only from not from the beginning of the design. So we didn't want to have any dependencies on systems that are not present in your air gap environment. So assuming that your air gap environment has, for example, uh, a key management infrastructure, you can actually do that uh, with uh, notary project signatures. So. Hi, um, not directly related to, to signing and notary and that, but I think related um, is that uh, one of the things that we're experiencing, right, is that these signatures are essentially point in time. So when you do your S-bombs and you have uh, yeah, CVEs attached to those, that's at the time of scanning, but CVEs get constantly added every day, every hour, so on. <laughs> um, I wanted to pick your guys' brains on how, how would you handle um, keeping your runtime secure uh, with uh, something like attestations where, again, that would work at deploy time, but say tomorrow that attestation may not have, you know, CVs or whatever. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, and I, so from notary project point of view, we are like, we don't think about the runtime, uh, but at least for example, in our uh, experience, or what I have seen with customers, right, um, they are, uh, so one is, as you said, the admission controllers, you verify the signatures during the admission control, uh, then after that it goes to the runtime and you don't know what happens, right? Uh, we are, uh, at least, uh, I, I work for Microsoft, so what we are looking at Microsoft is really to have regular attestations that are happening on, um, for example, regular intervals, daily, and you recertify this image on a daily. Um, for example, uh, interval. And uh, uh, eventually you can work with, uh, for example, uh, vulnerability scanning tools or runtime scanning tools to say, hey, if this thing is not recertified today, eventually look for a way how you can evict it from the cluster or trigger deployment and, and so on. So, uh, but from notary project point of view, is like, w how do we actually have a testation that can give us that information? And we are collaborating with uh, a few other folks in the community, uh, in total, kind of uh, the biggest community around the attestations, but uh, uh, there is a whole work stream going on about uh, uh, software development life cycle or orchestration or control plane where you can actually uh, do those things. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay. No, yeah, I can add what, what we are doing because uh, I understood the question, but um, or one thing I want to add is like, the important thing is that your ass bomb is correct, right? So if you're ensured that your ass bomb is signing and correct and is uh, ensure the integrity of that, and you have the integrity of the image at admission, like pots are more or less immutable, you can then continuously check the, uh, the if you're scanned for CVEs, you can continuously check what's in your ass bomb to retroactively uh, see, uh, uh, or to retroactively see that th there's been new CVEs, right? That's something you cannot uh, do at build time, but you can build your SBOM and check that. And so that's something that we're actually doing. And additionally, we have tools that to scan all containers that are running in our clusters regularly. But that's for CVEs. That's mainly for protecting our end users, because uh, we <laughs> can ensure a lot of stuff on our side uh, anyway. And additionally, we're not there yet to think about it as stations in that process, but it is a possibility. So, um, 
question maybe you can help me with the confusion. This presentation, great presentation, thank you so much, was focused around notation project of the Notary Project BB GitHub organization. There is an other project called Notary inside the same BB GitHub org that hasn't seen updates since about two years, if I saw yeah. that correctly. Can you explain the relationship between notation and notary and what's the story with notary? Uh, we have a, a extensive FAQ on the website, but I'll very briefly go through, through that. So, uh, Notary was the original kind of tool that uh, spun up the project. And uh, uh, Notary is, uh, uh, like, has a client and server component. And the server component works in uh, parallel with the registry, where you can actually, when you use the client component and sign images, uh, the server component issues all the certificates, uh, keeps information what is signed, and so on. Uh, unfortunately, that proved to be a little uh, hard for, let's say, uh, moving images that are signed uh, to, let's say, another registry, because this server component on Notary is tied to just one registry. Uh, in order to actually provide this portability of signatures between registries, because ideally what you would like to do is, let's say, something is signed in one registry, you don't want to resign it every time when you copy it. Um, we had to actually break this, this uh, um, connection between the server component of Notary and uh, the, the, the registry itself. So a couple of years ago, I think two, 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 three years ago, and actually I was not part of the project at that time, so I cannot provide a lot of context on the history, but the decision was made that uh, the, pro the, the open source uh, uh, project will be called Notary Project, and there will be a new tool called Notation, which will actually provide this ability to use existing KMS uh, uh, systems and provide portable signatures based on the OCI uh, uh, artifacts. So, does that answer your question, or? Yeah, go ahead. The microphone. I have a couple of follow-up questions, but I'd like to talk okay. to you offline. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, we have, uh, yeah, and one more on the back. Uh, you said that you're re-signing containers daily in one of your environments? Uh, no, we are not re-signing containers. We are actually uh, looking to create attestations that are signed daily. The reason being is like, uh, uh, the scenario is the following. So you build a container, you sign it, uh, which ensures the integrity of this container, right? So the container is immutable. You don't need to resign it multiple times. However, every day you scan for vulnerabilities. So when you build it initially, uh, assume that you don't have any vulnerabilities. It's vulnerability free, you sign it, everything is fine. The next day, though, you scan the container and figure out that there is a severe vulnerability. So you can run eventually like a task that goes and checks every day the container, whether, for example, it meets your policies, internal policies. And in your policy, if you say, I do not actually think that uh, this severe vulnerability should be deployed anywhere in uh, my enterprise. So what we are looking to do is to create a attestation that is signed that is attached to this container to say this container should not be used anymore internally because it has this particular vulnerability. Okay, that didn't take me in quite the direction I was thinking, but my real question would be how do you manage multiple signatures or um, multiple signatures on a, on a container? Like maybe you need to reap some. Do you have any advice for this? You can create as many signatures as you want. So using the OCI referrers uh, API, so you can attach multiple artifacts to these containers. And you can go and sign like with, let's say, my key, with Yark's key, with your own key. Uh, you can even like, uh, if you import signatures from somewhere else, you can have even six store signatures attached to this container. Uh, the way that we handle it is actually when we look through the signatures, so the referrer API should be able to filter based on uh, type of the, the artifact that you're attaching, uh, which means that uh, when we go and look uh, uh, for the image, we say, okay, we need only notary project signatures. 
Uh, one additional thing that uh, there was a discussion also in the OCI is how we can even do a better filtering to say I not only need notary project because if you have 100 notary project signatures, which one you specifically are you looking for, right? To provide a better fi filtering in, in, in that. So this is kind of still in discussion, but uh, you can attach as many signatures as you want. Uh, there was a question in the back. And I think that may be the last one because we are getting over time. Okay. So, um, a bit, so as a new uh, person in this space, I'm hearing a lot about six store, notary, and struggling to maybe pick one. And the question would be, if I start off with six store um, and have signatures, do you have a way to ingest or coexist if I choose you later? And two, why should I pick you versus um, Six or knowing that they are integrating with Kubernetes and all of that, uh, all of the good stuff that they're publicizing with Kubernetes. Yep. So uh, Six Store is actually pretty good signing technology, and uh, Six Store right now works very well for open source. Uh, where uh, we've seen customers struggle with Six Store is when they actually go and do something that you asked previously, air gap environments. So. Uh, they need to go and rebuild completely their signing infrastructure in their gap environment in order to use six store. And as we heard from Tiark, that is not a project that can be done in three months, right? No. <laughs> yeah. So this is where kind of a uh, notary project uh, uh, can, can help you. Uh, whether they can coexist, of course they can coexist, as I mentioned. So we, you can sign with six store signatures and uh, notary project signatures, and depending on which environment you use, uh, uh, and how your enterprise is progressing through the transformations, you can have, okay, my environment for this team requires six store signatures. Yes, mm -hmm. they can actually validate with six store. My other require, uh, environment requires notary project. You can uh, do that. So uh, I, I hope that answers your question, but yes, we can coexist, of course. Uh, we are even also uh, had some conversation with the six stores folks whether the tooling that they provide and we provide can validate signatures from the other uh, um, project, which means that you don't need to go and deploy, for example, uh, two different tools to provide the validation. And also, uh, it helps in scenarios where you say, let's say, your uh, partners or you use open source projects so you want to ingest images inside your enterprise and they are signed with six store so you can ingest them verify the six store signature but you can continue inside your enterprise on with notary project or vice versa maybe I can add to that because like basically a half a year ago in Paris in KubeCon where I first met Toddy I came to him with the exact same question and maybe as my experience as an end user um, and after learning a lot about both tools, I do think that they can totally coexist, and I do think that they actually solve slightly different problems. Um, Sixter is really, really good, especially for the open source community. And if you want a tool that is very easy to use for everyone, and you want to distribute uh, um, artifacts, especially over the internet, you can obviously also use it internally within companies. But the cool thing with Sixter, you get up and running in like 10 minutes, right? You just you have to use the seal I sign. You don't have to think about key management and stuff at all, all the stuff I talked about. It just works through their public um, infrastructure, full code six story uh, um, uh, going on. But so we actually plan on, because a lot of open source projects nowadays sign their artifacts with six store, and we plan on validating them. But what we wanted to do is first like provide our own authenticity. Like We already have certificates for everything. We want to sign with our own certificates to ensure that's actually the, that specific development team signing the artifact. And we want to build this, in, in, we want to have this internally. So we didn't want to uh, go the way of public infrastructure and use that, which, which you rely on if you use the default settings and, and, and co-sign at Sigstar. And if we would have gone with Sigstar and done, like just set up the whole uh, tool chain internally, which is absolutely possible, uh, we would have, as you mentioned, built a completely new PKI, but we already had existing one. And so for us, and 
I talked to a lot of other uh, platform engineers at large enterprises. That was the key point because we already have infrastructure to, to um, distribute all our certificates and stuff. And we're not stopping there, right? Not everything at Mercedes is running in Kubernetes. We also have lots of other projects. We actually have <laughs> uh, also lots of other teams doing their own Kubernetes stuff. And we want to integrate all of that. And so we decided that we need that flexibility and pluggability. So in my mind, Sixter is awesome if you want to distribute to people you don't know. And notary project notation specifically is very good if you want to do, use your internal ex existing infrastructure and tools and want to integrate with that. And especially air gap environments, which we do also have, but I didn't mention because it would have been a bit too much. Okay. Um, just to add to that, uh, as, as Tiark mentioned, it's not only Kubernetes that we need to sign and verify, right? So uh, we, for example, what Microsoft, we have other orchestration systems that do not run on Kubernetes. We need to provide also ability for those. So thank you very much, everyone. We'll be here for a couple more minutes if there are any more questions. Thank you. Thank you.